I'd like to talk a little bit about the sequelae of COVID-19 infection. Now, whether that is symptomatic or asymptomatic, as you know, we, we are, we've headed already into the 11th month or 12th month of this pandemic. And many of us are starting to see patients who may have had long-term post-viral symptoms. So there seem to be two different groups of individuals. One of those is those who experience some sort of permanent damage to the lungs, heart, kidneys, or brain. And the other group is those who continue to experience symptoms despite no detectable damage to the organs. Now, we call these people the long haulers. What are the most common symptoms? They include fatigue, shortness of breath, loss of taste and smell. Now, this may recover or it may not. Difficulty concentrating, memory problems, headaches, and difficulty sleeping. So you can see how these particular things are related to the nervous system, to the lungs, immunological function, and other things. Now, it's said that continued symptoms are more likely to occur in people over 50, people with two or three chronic illnesses, and people who became very ill with the virus. Now, there was an Italian prospective study, looking back, where they found that in a group of hospitalized patients who had no prior neurological disease, about 38% showed abnormalities on a neurologic exam six months later. And these abnormalities were commonly cognitive deficits, hyposmia, which is a lack of, of smell, and postural tremor. They also noted fatigue, memory impairments, and sleep disorders. Those were the hospitalized people. Now, how about those who experienced a mild case of the virus? They've also been affected by long-term symptoms months after they were infected. For example, out of 926 patients with non-severe COVID-19 in China, elevated AST and ALT, these are liver panel tests. Liver pathology tests were found in 18 to 20% of these patients. Also, up to 50% of asymptomatic COVID-19 patients, people who had COVID infection but didn't show huge symptoms, 50% have atypical chest CT scans. More specifically, ground glass opacities, meaning you can't see through uh, the lungs because of, of a, uh, oh, a phenomenon that shows up that looks sort of like ground glass. And that indicates pulmonary inflammation and possibly fibrosis. So even though someone did not go in the hospital, it's quite possible that there could be pulmonary or lung issues going on with them. Ergo, the shortness of breath and fatigue. <clears throat> A viral immunologist and infectious disease expert at the University of California, San Francisco, Timothy Hendricks, states the etiologies, the causes, are almost certainly multifactorial, but may involve overzealous immune responses, cardiopulmonary or systemic inflammation, vascular inflammation or clotting disorders, and direct damage from viral replications during acute illness. So the virus itself can cause a reaction in the body, or the body may overstimulate itself in the response to the virus and cause damage because uh, an overactive inflammatory response can cause all kinds of damage. Just like if you see someone, see people rioting in the streets, they break windows, all this kind of stuff. This is an example of like an over-inflammatory response where things are broken um, versus just people letting off steam and um, being upset but not breaking a lot of stuff. So if, if your body's immune system gets overactive, 
overreactive. It starts destroying your own tissues as it goes along. And that tissue debris has to be dealt with or it turns into something uh, pathological and something that becomes chronic and like fibrosis or other things of that nature. So COVID-19 is not the first viral infection human, being have, human beings have encountered. Obviously, we've been encountering viral infections as long as human beings have existed. <clears throat> However, seeing patients or, or clients or other people months later who are still suffering from symptoms is very concerning. That This is not resolved. Uh, there are healthy young athletes still struggling with shortness of breath or older adults suffering with extreme fatigue and cognitive issues. These are the type of things we will continue to see as COVID plays out. So, of course, it's very necessary for all of us to address the underlying inflammation and the other etiologies. And this is something that in my practice, I have years of experience doing. It is not simply COVID-19 related conditions because we've seen these before. There are numerous protocols that I have that can be very helpful in supporting your body in returning to health or reducing the damage done already by the infections. So I would, I would, I would suggest that you give me a call. Uh, contact my office, and we'll see if we can find the right protocol for you to help boost your system, balance your system so it's not over-responding still, and help you return to as normal a function as possible. Thanks a lot. Dr. Jay Sordian here with your COVID-19 update.